Hey everyone, welcome back to Skies of Arcadia Legends. Last time we uh, fought and beat one of the bounty uh, bosses. We also fought and failed to beat one a bounty hunter before deciding to change plans and cross South Ocean. Maybe do a little bit more grinding before we attempt that. Um, anyways, um, however, if you remember last time when I got to Ixataga, I had mentioned missing a discovery. Um, I'm doubling back to that real quick. Um... And I'm going to show you where that discovery was. Um, so you can kind of see where I'm on my map. I'm on kind of the lower end of South Ocean, kind of near earlier part. You know, one of the... Um, so if you look here, you see this little rock right here. It's a little oddly shaped. It's not what I thought it was. That is your sky anemone. Um, a bizarre creature that lives its entire life attached to a rock. Stretching its tentacles out and waiting for prey to float by. It releases a sweet fragrance to attract fish, but larger ones have been known to endanger small ships. Now, I actually took the, the uh... Oh, and I don't think I ever got uh, around to saying this. This is one of the few times the uh, start button actually pauses the game. It gives you an op option to save mid-flight, or you can actually go to the bridge of the ship. Um, that having been said, um... I'm gonna... I've actually learned how... I've got a video editing software now that allows me to cut bits out. So I'm going to head over to um, Ixtaka and I'll meet you guys back there. Alright, and we're back. I just, I had to get the uh, black map because in one of my pre-recordings I actually like got first strike killed. So <laughs> that didn't go out too well. So... All right, you can kind of see us approaching this uh, blue and ship. I figured I'd show off the uh, magic cannon, assuming I can uh, not get bombarded every time I want with enemies. And you can see him up there. All right. This area is property of the Valuan Empire. We will not allow your uh, air pirates to invade these lands as well. Valuan Phantom Cruiser. Um. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to start off with my usual setup. I'm going to use Ingram with Vice. And. Let's actually, let's focus with Aka, because Fina's a little bit stronger of a magic caster. And then we're going to focus some uh, actual firepower at the end of the turn. Now, like I said, prior to Beleza, you couldn't actually use the magic cannon. Uh, you could cast spells to heal and augment yourself, but you couldn't actually um, use assault magic. You can see with Vina, it does a little bit of damage. I actually tried it prior with Aka before I uh, messed up and realized uh, I had my voice off for way too long, and it did about 300 less damage. our regular cannons are stronger, but one advantage of spell-based attacks is a higher accuracy rate. There we go, that one went down pretty easy. What's funny is one of its alternate lines is that, uh... <laughs> it has a hard time believing a dinky little ship like ours can keep up with it, uh, well... 
Well, you and Steel, uh, I guess, emphasis on their uh, namesake being value. All right. Let me go ahead. Let me heal up our party members and the little Jack. All right. So this is Ixataka. Um, you'll kind of get to see a better of it, better idea of it in a bit. But um, what equipment do I have? Okay, I have the counter bracer. That's good at least. And this actually has a lot of unique, um, unique things about it. Um, it's pretty, pretty, uh, a lot of firsts in this area, I guess. All right, so first off, what we want to do, I can't remember, I think it's right here. Okay. Another precise, uh, two discoveries here. All right, uh, so we got a new batch of enemies. These are the Varkris. And admittedly, I haven't excessively gr grinded an Ixitaka, so I couldn't tell you um, what its deal is, so give me a minute. So pretty much its main thing, just like a lot of other... Um, a lot of smaller enemies as it can uh, call allies, but it really isn't anything too unique. Other than that, a lot of standard spells. Obviously, it's going to be uh, favor green magic just because of its native area. Alright, so let's start off with this one. Alright, so this is the Ixanes Village. Um. Obviously, this is uh, roughly based off the Amazons, a tribe of women that lives on a small island in Ixataka. They are skilled and fearsome warriors. They raid nearby villages twice a year to kidnap men. The number of men in nearby tribes have been almost reduced to nothing. This is a bit of a historical misrepresentation. For those who do know, there is actually an accurate Amazon. However, it is not in the uh, river whose namesake is based off of this, but it's actually based off of a uh, Mediterranean... A, a... some sort of individual group of people near the Mediterranean. Could be the Mongols, as they both did employ uh, male and female soldiers, but the Greeks were not used to females actually um, fighting, so these women were built larger than most. And as such, they just assumed this was like... They blew it out of proportion. Um... But generally speaking, this it was actually not an all-female warrior tribe. It's not like Wonder Woman. They wouldn't kill any man that wandered into their territory. These were just a tribe of people who uh, uh, actually um, had both male and females uh, in action. And believe it or not, funny story, <laughs> since these are the Amazons, you know how Gal Gadot plays uh, Wonder Woman? Yeah. Modern-day Israel requires all men and women uh, to serve at least uh, two years, at the very least, military uh, wall guard duty. But yes, that means that for all intents and purposes, Gal Gadot is arguably one of the most fitting people to play in Amazon. <laughs> kind of funny uh, little factoid that. Now, I've got to figure out... I may have to resort to my handy-dandy little map here. Um... Okay, so it's on the next island over. I have a... Now that the discoveries are getting a little, little trickier to find, I'm going to start, uh, at least according to the last episode, I'm going to start putting uh, the discoveries the discoveries map I'm referencing in a link in the description. Um, this is the Tertala Pole. It is a wooden pole with the faces of people and various animals engraved into its length. The upper portion, the upper and lower portions, were lost years ago, so nobody knows what its true purpose was—a monument, a grave, or perhaps a store sign. <laughs> I like to believe it's the latter. Um, maybe there's a few history buffs who would know the basis for this thing and could actually give me an accurate idea. But that's just just a interesting thing there. Um, all right, so a few more. All right, ah, so here we go. 
we've got the Sorok, and these guys actually have an unusually interesting drop. It's called the Wind Gym Ring. Um, I believe it's these ones. No, it's it's actually a different line. I'm thinking of something different. But there is actually a line of enemies here that drops an item that uh, eliminates a uh, confusion status. These are actually more similar to those bats in uh, Valura, but... Having been said... Let's see, where am I at? Okay, so nothing else on this island. Gathering my bearings, because there's quite a few discoveries here. Like, a lot. Alright, this thing, this is the... I think it's the Roselle. I'm not certain, I'm assuming that's an L there. And not a capital I. Um. Anyways, um, and these are the penalists. The Roselle is the more interesting of the two here. And actually, uh, I don't know if you remember, but I mentioned in passing a while back that there are enemies that'll actually have an area of an effect attack, but because of the way the uh, battlefield and the character models work, there's actually a chance of it missing. This is one of those enemies. It has a basically an ability that puts everyone within, like, I'd say about, like, a, that circle's radius of it to sleep. Um, but if no one's nearby, it'll just outright miss. So. What's funny about the, uh, or no, it, I, it might poison, I believe. It has a chance of poisoning, but you saw it, it's the Death Blossom. Um, I think it actually casts, um, Slipara, which is what threw me off. A little critical, because these things, they... It's kind of funny, I just find it funny how those penalists, when they attack from a long <laughs> distance, they look like they're just aggressively sniffing their target. There it is, slumber dust. That does affect everyone, though. It's actually kind of the main utility of the uh, wind ring.
Okay, so there should be one... Here we are. You have found the Great Bird. The wings and tail of the Great Bird are said to indicate the equinoxes of the ancient Ixitakan Verduluna calendar. Figures of other animals once dotted the plain, but they have been swallowed by the expanded forest, leaving only the bird. So, in case it wasn't obvious, these are based off the Nazca lines. Uh, if you've even so much as watched Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, you'd be familiar with it in some capacity. Hmm? Hey, Aka, do you see something glittering on the ground? Right where the eye of that bird would be. Hey, you're right. Let me go now and see what it is. Hey, Vice, I found something. There was a gem stuck into the ground. I'm sure they won't miss a little itty bitty gem, would they? Found the great bird's eye. Besides, who knows when a nice little gem like this will come in handy? Hmm, I wonder. Now, there is actually a discovery you could use this bird to find, but I don't think it'll be available before a certain point in the game. It is one of the few discoveries in game that's actually uh, locked to certain story points. Another discovery we want to find, we want to kind of hug this little thing here, and it is going to be a moving discovery. Um, let's see if I can run into it. If I stay here long <laughs> enough, it should pass by. It's not like the trickiest mobile discovery to find, but it, it, it's not easy either. Just gotta kinda wait for it to loop around a little bit. And of course, Let's Play Curse. I've had no problem finding this thing most times I've played the game. Now, all of a sudden, it's, it's getting to be a little short. Ah, oh, this thing. Okay, this is the thing I'm talking about. Langry. If I'm not mistaken, these are the things that drop wind gem rings. Um, like I said, they are helpful, I think, for specifically preventing sleep status, not confusion. Let me be painfully clear, that is, you don't realize how helpful that is, especially for a later boss in the game. Optional, but later. Sometimes I wonder if I should just come back to it. Oh, wait. I think I ended up inadvertently running into it without realizing it. There it is. Okay. See this little golden airplane thing? Come back to Yu-Gi-Oh! references, it looks a little bit like a Millennium item. You have found the Wings of Gold. A small machine with giant golden wings was recently discovered near the ancient city. Perhaps the people of the ancient world wished to be able to fly like the birds and, and the fish, so they created this flying machine so they could join them in flight.
Sorry about that, I'm back. I just had to have a brief conversation. Um. Let's see here. I'm gonna reference my discovery map real quick. Sorry about that, I had my mic off for a minute. Anyways, this is where the next discovery is, the Golden Man, a golden statue that stands quietly, as if pointing something out. It is thought to have been placed here to protect the sacred land. Male statues are often found in temples and other buildings, while female statues are found near holy lakes and trees. What's this? You found the Golden Man's eye. Hey, no one will notice if it's missing, right? And besides, we're air pirates. Can you really blame us for taking a little bit of treasure? Yep, so, obviously that seems to be story important later on. For the time being, there's another one here in the area. Should be the Ixatakan Palace. Uh, and I think that covers um, all but one discovery in uh, Ixataka that's available right now. This stone palace was once the site of ceremonies based on the ancient lunar calendar, built during the reign of the Moon Kings. This palace flourished as the center of Ixataka's civilization for ages, but was destroyed several years ago by the Valuans. Alright, now two other things, or about three other things roughly. Um... That big place right now, that's kind of where we need to be next, but for the time being, let's go under here. 
You have found the Garbifruits, a vine plant that hangs from the bottom of the continent. Its stem contains a powerful hallucinogen, and it has been used for medicinal and religious purposes throughout the, through the ages. It is also commonly used in local delicacies. So... Now, there is a, a particularly unique ship we're looking for, and I don't know if you remember, but at some point earlier I told you to hold on to about at least ten Sky Sardis. Uh, it was kind of near the beginning of the game, actually. This is what we're using it for, if I can find that ship in question. And there's the brilliantly named e -Looper. Okay, if I've hit South Ocean, I should have gone too far. So, where is it? There is a ship here, and it is a. It's one of the few times that, outside of the dock and the uh, Angel of Death, that you actually want to interact with ships in the game. Oh no, hold on, I heard something. I may have to find it later. Alright, I'll attempt to find it here in a minute, and if I don't, it may just be the next episode before you see that. Um, for the time being, let's go back to that uh, place in between. Alright, and somewhere in between these two areas, there should be a ship floating about. Okay, not these two, but actually those other two. So not too far between the Great Bird and the Golden Man statue, you want to find this ship that looks like it has something in the back. Shh, hey kid, I got some value in arms here. Also buy and sell discovery information. I've got everything you need. So this is kind of the closest thing you're going to have in this area to a sailor guild. And actually, we want to buy a G-type cannon. I'm going to buy two of those. Shock Torpedo. And a 5-inch cannon. We also want to buy the floor heater, and there was actually something I forgot to buy back in, um... Now, this isn't necessary. This is only for the Vice the Extravagant thing. There was something back in, um... Uh, Maramba, I believe, that I missed for that, but I could go back and get that later. Um, now let's sell, we're going to sell our two standard cannons, our three-inch blaster, and our heavy cannon. Alright, and now we're going to sell all of our... Yeah, I love it. Ixataka, yes, I've heard rumors of existence. I'm literally here. <laughs> I just kind of found that funny. I love how pretty much everything that isn't Ixataka is like, yeah, 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 that's new. But then it's like, yeah, the very continent we're talking to this guy from, it's like, well, duh. <laughs> you didn't discover that. We're here. <laughs> 
And I was talking about how uh, Domingo particularly is here, and he is looking for, I believe it was the uh, Ixatakan Palace. I'm scatterbrained. I swore I knew where this ship is. Maybe I can't get to it before I go into Ixataka or this area. Alright, so since I can't find it, I may just have to get it on the next episode. For now, I want to get at least into the uh, area I am trying to be in. Forgive me, this is a bit of a shorter episode, but um... So we're gonna go in this this little treehouse looking area. And get ready to hear what is well, get to hear it more and thorough, but get to hear what is arguably the best music of the game. In fact, I'm gonna just turn that up just a hair. Um, there are a bunch of people wearing masks, and they have spears, too. Are you Katya? Huh? Think we remember that name vaguely? If you go back. The girl in the white clothes. Is she Katya? What? Are they talking about me? Um, we're blue rogues, and we came across the South Ocean. You are not Ketya. You are the same as the other men from the East. It is best if you leave soon. Spoilers, we're probably lucky they didn't attack us. How did I say? What do they mean, Ketya? And who are the men from the East? <laughs> I love Venus confusion. I have no idea. I don't know what they're talking about. We should meet with the leader of the village. He might be able to explain what's going on here. Also, that trip across South Ocean has depleted our fuel supply. We need to stock up on moonstones if we ever want to leave this place. Okay, let's find the leader of this village. Maybe we'll be able to find some moonstones here as well. So... I don't know if I'm going to make this into a... I may just have to do... I, I do have to cut out here in a few minutes. I don't know if I'm going to do a... Uh, make this uh, one episode and the next one the next, or if I might just uh, hybridize them into one episode, because I know this is running a bit on the short side by comparison. Um, so I'll just see you guys back shortly, one way or another. Sorry about that, just had to had some important business we had to do. Um anyways, um now we're in a Ixtaka or Horteca as the village is called. Um I'm gonna level with you. The music is wonderful, the ambiance is uh great. The problem with that I have this level is that if this is your first time playing, the or you haven't played in a while, the layout is confusing as heck. Um, that said, I'm going to try to do my best to get every chest accessible, moonberries, so on and so forth, or anything that's collectible here. So there is a kind of way, I guess, that is optimal to go. Alright, so, we're going to start here. We're going to go down this ramp. Right now, okay, so we could go into the store, but if you talk to, like, the shopkeep, I have nothing to sell to a person from the East. She's shy. Uh, basically, no one's gonna do anything for you because you are a because you are a person from the east. Um, 
let me wait for it to loop back around. I'm gonna pause real quick, but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna climb this ladder. I'm gonna try to start going towards the first Moonberry. Or the first chest in the area. There's there's a few here. But if it gets to the point. I didn't really let you listen to the music proper. So, and before it loops, we get to our first chest, we go across this, it'll be right as you disembark. And in perfect timing. That's Moonberry, I believe. Alright. I'm gonna let it loop around here and then let you listen to the full soundtrack while I kind of actually go without talking too much. Okay, so this is not where I thought it was. I'm gonna let it loop back in the beginning, and that way you can kind of listen to the whole loop. We're gonna go back down this. It's best to kind of replicate the path I'm doing. Because it's the closest thing you can kind of get to like a like a linear movement to getting everything. Go down this ladder. Ignore this for the time being. Now. That's a full loop of that. So, as you saw, I went and got a moonfish, a moonberry, and I talked to someone that will actually be important way later on. There's our kind of our key point in our save area. Let's talk to this gentleman first. 
Um, he's not the assorted dry leaves, I can assure you that. Okay, here we go. So you are the ones from the east who the people have been talking about. I should think I got my Nazrat accent going on there. So you are from the east. No people bring disaster. Leave this village immediately. Wait a minute. Why does he, everyone keep talking about these men from the east and this Ketya stuff? I don't even know what a Ketya is. Ketya is our god. Generations ago, when the giant came to destroy us, Ketya appeared and saved our village. Ancient prophecies say that Ketya's messengers will come from the east and save us if our land is ever in danger. I understand, and since we came from the east, this is why everyone thinks Ketya sent us. But if Ketya's messengers are supposed to save you, why did you say that people from the east bring disaster? Even now, the men from the east are destroying our land. They claim they came from a place called Valua. Valua, they're here too? When the people from Valua came, everyone thought that Ketya sent them. Even the king came to greet them. The people from Valua said they wanted moonstones. We took them to our sacred rock, ma sacred mountain where we keep glow rocks. So, the Valuans came to steal their moonstones. And then the people from Valua attacked us with fire-breathing iron ships. They took control of Sacred Mountain. Everyone, even the king, fought. But many were killed and the forest was burned. The survivors were taken as slaves. That's terrible. They're using your people to gather the moonstone so they can make weapons. So that's why everyone is against, so against the men from the east. Please, you need to trust us. We are different from the Valuans, the men from the east. We fight against Valua so they can't hurt people. And that is why we've come all this way. We need a very precious stone called a moon crystal. Hmm. You can't expect him to trust us. You're wasting your time, boy. Please, I am telling the truth. Please. I'm not sure if it's meant to, but his his uh, eyebrow decorations look like uh, floppy disks. <laughs> if you fly north from this village, you'll see a small hut in the middle of the forest. And that is where our king is hiding. The kings of our land have always passed the sacred green stone from generation to generation. This may be the stone that you seek. Your eyes, they are pure. I believe that you are here to help us. Please save our people. Uh -huh. Thank you. I will not betray you. Let's go. We've got a village to save. And not only does this hut have a... Uh, is this kind of where the story happens? This functions as the inn. So you're from the east. You look tired. You Would you like a room for the night? It'll be 160 gold. Sleep well. Alright. Now that we're rested up. You seem refreshed. Come again anytime you need a rest. Alright. So, we've got a few more ch things to do before we get going. Um... So right off the bat, we want to take this little uh, this little transit uh, platform that I ignored earlier, and we want to go up this pole particularly. And at the top of this pole, there is this house. It will come in handy later. Um, but for now, we want to ignore it. 
go down this slide, get a very Rayman-esque looking thing going on here. At least I feel like they did something like this in Rayman. It's been a long time since I played those games. And well, up until recently, he was overshadowed by his uh, minion knockoffs that his... Uh, so not only was that guy on the top of the cliff important, this lady is too. I am Merida, the dancer of this tavern. When I dance, I make ha everybody happy, but I... I cannot dance anymore. The Valuans killed my father, and they killed many of my friends too. No, now when I dance, it does not people make people happy. So I dance no more. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys in on a little secret. She was responsible for the message in a bottle back at Sailor's Island. That's something to remember later down the line. So, didn't mean to... Alright, so that little painting is secretly a door. You've got a Sacri box, which is useful. And while I'm thinking about it, what is my Moonberry account on that? One. I'm going to try to... Uh, finish out Dragma's moveset well before we're done with um, Ixataka. <clears throat> Alright, so you come up here. It's kind of cool, like, there's nothing you need up here, but there's this, like, this little um, vat. You kind of you kind of interact with it. He'll mention that. Um, let's see, let's see if I can get him to say something about it. It's kind of neat. Just little quality of life stuff. It's some liquid, almost like honey. There's a really sweet smell that's filling the whole room. I'm not certain. I'd have to look back and see what he what he would be referring to uh, the real world equivalent. All right, and if you double back here. You can kind of hear it. There is a moonfish. It takes a little work finding. And I'm just blind. Alright. Get another one of these fun little bits. Right here. Alright. Now we want to hang a left here. Climb this ladder. But we don't want to quite leave just yet. We actually can't, as Drachma kind of said in passing earlier. We're short on fuel, so we're going to come back down here. And a cham. And actually, I want to use that prawn seed, and I'm going to use it on vice again. All right, so couple things that are here. First off, this ship, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you know, in all of uh, Horteca, uh, this is the only missable chest, so you want to go back around the back of the ship, open this chest, and you get 25 Sacred Crystals, which is going to be very helpful coming up very soon. Talk to this gentleman. Hello, you don't seem to be from this town. Who are you? We're not. We actually had to cross the South Ocean to get here. My name's Vice. <laughs> wow, you were able to cross the South Ocean. That's impressive. My name's Hans. It's good to meet you. We're blue rogues under the cap command of Captain Sintime. We had to crash land here after a hurricane knocked us off course. Sintime. He's that blue rogue that takes an orphan and trains them. I also heard that he's a brilliant engineer. <sighs> he was. I mean, is. Valuans kidnapped him and are forcing him to build weapons for them. 
We're staying here and working on the ship until he returns. Oh, I hope he returns soon. Hey, Hans! I was wondering if you could help, uh, help out some fellow blue rogues. We burned all of our fuel crossing South Ocean. Do you think you could spare a few moonstones? Of course, we got plenty to spare. Here, take these. Thanks, we owe you one. You really helped us out a lot. You're welcome. Here, I need to get back to work. Good luck. Alright, receive the moonstone, full, moonstone fuel. And now we are good to leave uh, Porteca. So, the music is wonderful, ambiance is wonderful, but if you don't know what you're doing, and I did kind of take you through the whole town, but it, you can get lost very easily. Ixitaka as a whole is not my favorite region. It does have one of my favorite dungeons in the game. Unfortunately, for those who played, you probably already know what I mean. It's also immediately offset by what is effectively one of my least favorite dungeons in the whole game. So it, it's kind of a weird trade-off. All right, so we're going to go out here, return to your ship, and um, the hut he was talking about, you may have noticed it a little bit, but it is uh, actually near the Golden Man statue. I want to see if I can't find that ship, because I swore it's one of the only ships that's actually out here. Um, Like I said, I mentioned it earlier, but the, you have to collect about... You have to collect and hold on to about 10 Sky Sardis. I'm just trying to remember for life of me where it is. Okay, I don't like how fast these things are. Thankfully, I got Sacrum, which heals the full party for a thousand uh, HP each. Alright, that should be the Balloon ship. Where is it? Give me a second, I'm going to see if I can't hunt this down here. I think I got kind of an idea. Let's see, where's Horteca? Okay, there's Horteca, so. No, it isn't too terribly far off from Horteca. It's gonna be a ship out in this general area. That much I do know. I just can't remember for the life of me. Can you run can you only run into it after the next dungeon? Let's see here. Maybe, maybe that's the case. But I sure as heck ain't running into it now. Okay, so this may just be after we complete each talk as a whole because I can't seem to be finding this for the life of me. So. We're going to want to go to the, so we're going to skip that for now, for the time being. We're going to go towards the, uh, 
Like I said, the, if you go in the general direction of the Golden Man statue, you can kind of see it here soon. You see that tree looking thing? That's, that's the king's hideout. But before we could get there... <clears throat> hey, what's that smell? It smells like something is burning. Look on the horizon. The forest! forest, I'll be able to find the lost city of Rixus, and the moon crystal will be mine! Lord DeLogo, there's a ship approaching for the aft. It matches the description of those air pirates. Vice is here. He is the kid that escaped from the Grand Fortress and defeated Beleza. Perfect! Perfect! He's just in time to feel the heat from my flame cannon! <laughs> I wonder how Vice likes his food. Medium? Or perhaps well done. I hope he doesn't die too fast. <laughs> the forest! This is horrible! What kind of twisted psycho would do this? Whoever it is, he'll have to deal with me. If we get hit by that blast of fire, we're done for. We'll have to dodge the flames and counterattack. Hehehe! <laughs> Feel the power of the invincible chameleon! Um, now this is the Loco, obviously, and as he let us know, it is his ship, the chameleon. Um,. I'll admit that this is one of the few times where I'm actually a little stumped. The strategy is to kind of hit this guy fast and hard on the turn before um, he gets the flame cannon off. However, I'm actually not 100% certain. I don't ever seem to do this one right. So I just kind of go at him until he's zero and defend accordingly. You'll get to see use of a torpedo. Outside of this battle, you won't see me actually employ torpedoes much. I actually prefer to load up on secondary cannons, but... And you'll understand why later. They're not very good right now, but the secondary cannons are fantastic later on. We've got some good RNG going for us. Damn you, Vice! You dare even scratch my precious chameleon! You will pay for your insolence! Lord DeLoco, we must pre repair the damage of the ship as soon as... Silence! It may be damaged, but a perfect machine will never break down! <laughs> you just you watch. I'll make sure to give you a taste of each and every one of my cannons! As you can see, this, this guy's a little unhinged. And I'm thinking I'm going to make that my turn. 
so. Let's see if I did this right. If you do this right, it'll be kind of similar to how you do the uh, secondary cannon trick with Reckman and his flame cannon will miss. <laughs> it's time for the main event. You better watch out, Vice. Don't get too close or you'll get burnt. All right. So right now, the thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go at it with the uh, harpoon cannon. How do you like that advice? That's what you get for scratching my ship. Damn, I didn't think that flying piece of junk could do that much damage. Listen, boy, focus our cannon fire on the turn right before he, he attacks. It will knock him off balance. His ship is relatively small. If we knock him off balance, he may, might not be able to use that cannon. So, yeah, um... See if I can get that to work. That's kind of what he's suggesting. So when you see that yellow, that's when you kind of want to unload. I'm going to hold off this turn. I'm going to heal up. We can a little 
worse for wear. What are you doing? Hurry up and fire the flamethrower! <coughs> the last enemy attack threw us off balance. We can't get a lock on the target. Okay, there it is. What? What are you fools doing? I need you. I Do I need to tell you how to do your jobs? Do I need to tell you how to do your jobs? Oh, wow, there is a typo in that. Damn you, Vice! Damn you! Okay, so I actually did do that for once. Alright, so... Just kind of keep it up, rinse, repeat. And there we go. Not a terrifically hard boss, just best to know when to attack. What? What? Impossible! My, my flame cannon! How? It can't be! It can't be! <coughs> There's no way they can defeat me! This must be a dream! A dream, I tell you! Sir, sir, get a hold of yourself. We must retreat. Head back to Moonstone Mountain. In case you haven't caught on, not only is he, like, nuts, but he thinks he's unbeatable to the point where he thinks he might as well be dreaming if he loses. All right, we've got them on the run. They're probably searching for the moon crystal, too. We've got to hurry. All right, and I think this is a good stopping point for now. I'll see you guys next episode. Um, you have a wonderful rest of your day.